Hi friends, Vince here with the Tinkerer's Workshop. This video today is going to be a follow-up on a video I did not too long ago on making a scratch stock. Uh, scratch stock is used to cut a, a small bead or profile on the edge of a workpiece. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, you can watch that video. But today what I'd like to talk about is another tool that I often use in my shop for making beads, and that is the Stanley Number no. 66 Beater. Stanley made these from 1886 to 1941. It was a fairly popular tool. They made quite a few of them and there are a lot of them still out there. If you look on eBay you can usually find several on there at any any given time. Um, you'll find them at tool swap meets. I believe I, I think I bought this one off of a woodworking forum. Someone was selling it. Um, I don't remember exactly what I paid for this. I think it was around 25 or 30 dollars uh, the price on these really depends a lot on the condition and how complete they are. There's a number of parts to them that sometimes will get lost over the years, so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But this one has is missing a few things, which I'll, I'll go into, but uh, you can usually find these fairly inexpensively. Uh, Lee Nielsen also makes a replica of these, so if you don't want to look for a used tool, you can buy a new one. And I think Veritas makes their own version of a beater tool as well. So those are something you can check out. It's a very simple tool. It's, it's easy to use. Um, basically consists of a cast iron body. Uh, originally these were Stanley uh, Japan these with black Japaning. And then they went to a nickel plating. This is one of the nickel plated versions. And you can see that on this one, much of the nickel plating has worn off over the years. Uh, it still works fine, it's just not the prettiest tool to look at. It doesn't look quite as nice as it did when it was brand new, but it doesn't affect the function at all. The cutters basically just slide into a little slot here, and then there's a thumb screw that you tighten to lock them in place. And then on the bottom, there's a groove for a fence. Uh, the fence can be adjusted any distance away from the cutter or move to the other side even if you want to um, cut moldings on depending on which side of the workpiece you want to work on. Originally these came with two different fences. This is the straight fence and then they also made a curved fence that would be used for working with round pieces if you're doing a round tabletop say and you wanted to put a bead around that. I don't have the curved fence with this. That's one of the parts that's often missing. One or, one or both of the fences will often be missing when you find these because they do come all the way off and then you know they get set aside in a toolbox or just put aside and lost, separated from the original tool. Um, it's not a big deal that I don't have the curved fence. I, the straight one is the one I would probably use most of the time anyway, so I don't really miss not having that curved fence. Um, originally Stanley offered seven and then later they had eight cutters total for this tool and they, it all, they all came with the tool when you, when you purchased it. Uh, I only have six of the cutters. Again, this is something that is you know, commonly find missing when you find these. You may only get one or two cutters. Uh, what I have are three of the bead cutters and I, the different sizes of beads. I think this is probably an eighth inch bead down here up to this looks like maybe half inch. I have a three bead and four bead cutter. Um, there's a, a router that actually will cut grooves. This is an eighth inch wide and quarter inch wide groove cutter. And you'd use that to make shallow grooves for string inlays, something like that. They gave you a blank cutter to cut your own profile. I have that one. What I don't have, there are two more uh, cutters, and I, I think they're both fluting cutters. They had like a little round end on them that would cut a flute in a workpiece, and then, you know, different sizes of that. So that's the tool in itself. Um, like I said, it's very easy to use, and you get really nice results. So I thought I'd just real quickly walk you through uh, making a profile using this tool. So we'll head over to the other bench and see how that's done. Okay, I'm over at my other workbench and I've got a piece of mahogany clamped up here in the vise. I've got the Stanley 66 beater set up here. Um, the cutter is set in position so that it's the profile is just proud of the base of the tool. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you want to make you want to get it set up so that it'll stop cutting just as you hit the bottom of the profile. And I set the fence to just an approximate offset of where I want it. This is just a practice piece, so it's not very critical. 
One nice thing is the fence does have a, a little groove in it, so if you want to bury part of the profile, you can slide the fence over and it'll cover up part of that profile. I'm not going to do that in this case, but that's ready to go. Um, like most of these tools, you can either push them or pull them. I prefer to push them. I hold it this way and push. And to get it started, I find it easiest to start kind of at the far end and just do a little stroke and then gradually lengthen the stroke as you go. And then eventually you can start taking full length passes. This is fairly slow work. I'm uh, not going as fast as I normally would just because I'm demonstrating it. But you just keep making passes until the profile starts getting deeper and deeper. Okay, it looks like we've reached the full depth of the profile, so I'm going to unclamp it from the vise and take it back over to the other bench so you can see it a little better. Alright, here we are with the completed profile. It's a reed, and made with this reeding cutter. came out real nice and smooth. Uh, boy, this mahogany sure cuts beautifully when you're doing something like this. It's a great wood to work with. So after I made this profile, just for fun, I put another cutter in the beading tool and made a, just a single bead, a quarter inch bead. That one came out nice and smooth, real crisp as well. So there you have it. That is the Stanley 66 beater. And thanks for watching.